Today, I want to conclude my three-part video series on turboprop engines. And I want to end the series with the comparison of the free turboprop engine with the fixed single shaft turboprop engine. Most of you are probably more familiar with the free turboprop engine as this is the one most commonly found in general aviation aircraft. Um, the most famous uh, example of a free turboprop engine is of course the Pratt & Whitney PT6, PT6A uh, engine which you find on the Cessna Caravan, on the Beach King Air and on many uh, diff uh, other different aircraft. As opposed to that, the fixed single shaft turboprop engine is found on a little more exotic planes uh, like the Dornier 228 uh, the Mitsubishi uh, Mu2 and the uh, Rockwell Turbo Commander. So what's the difference in design between these types of engines? Well, it's in the name. Free turbo shaft or uh, so free turboprop or fixed turboprop engine. The free turboprop engine has no connection between the propeller and the gas generator part of the engine whereas in the fixed single shaft engine they are all on one shaft. So reviewing the free turboprop engine we know that the air comes in, moves through the compressor, is compressed, goes through the combustion chamber where fuel is injected, the combustion happens and then the hot exhaust gas drives the turbine wheel which drives the compressor at the entrance and in this design it drives another turbine wheel or maybe even two turbine wheels on a separate shaft and these turbine wheels extract the energy from the exhaust stream, convert that energy into rotation, um, they spin up to a very very high RPM, then this goes through a planetary gearbox the high RPM of the turbine wheels is converted into a low RPM suitable for the prop and that's what drives the prop. And the important part of the design is that between the shaft that drives the compressor and the shaft that goes through the gearbox to the propeller, there's no mechanical connection. The only thing that couples those, through, uh, those two shafts is the exhaust gases going through the turbine wheels. The way you can think about it is exactly the same as the torque converter in your automatic transmission. If you have a car with an automatic transmission with a torque converter, there's um, two wheels that are not connected mechanically, but they are connected by a fluid. And in your car, that fluid is the ATF, the automatic transmission fluid. And in the free turbine engine, that fluid is air or exhaust gas. Compared to that, the fixed turboprop engine, here we also have a compressor that is spinning, compressing air, sending the compressed air into the combustion chamber, fuel is added, ignition happens, com combustion happens, and the hot exhaust gases want to go this way. And in going out of the engine, the hot exhaust gases drive a set of turbine wheels which spin the compressor shaft. And we have more turbine wheels and more turbine capacity than we need to just spin the compressor. So we have a lot more energy on the shaft than we need to just drive the compressor. And what we do with this excess energy, we fit, we go uh, the, uh, with the shaft into a gearbox, convert the high turbine RPM into a lower RPM for the propeller and drive the propeller with this excess energy. So all on a single shaft coupled through the gearbox all the way down through the propeller, no um, free play in there, no nothing resembling a torque converter in there. All right, what are the practical implications of flying an airplane with those two designs? Well, the first difference is how you start the engine. If you look at a turboprop aircraft parked on the ramp with the engine shut down, and you look at the propeller and it looks like this as it's stationary, the propeller blades, are like this when it's stationary. You know you are looking at a free turbine engine because the propeller is feathered as the engine is shut down 
And there's no problem with having the prop feathered while the engine is shut down because when you start the engine and oil pressure builds and the oil pressure is what drives the propeller blades from the feather to the, um, to the alpha position, um, this can happen while the rest of the engine is leisurely spooling up and it can do that because while the core part of the engine is spooling up it does not have to drive the gearbox, does not have to drive the propeller because there's no mechanical connection. Um, it starts to run just as enough air is going through it and the RPM just comes up when uh, enough air is going through it or enough combustion gas is going through it to overcome the drag of the propeller. Not a big deal. Very easy to start. On the other hand, if you look at the plane that sits on the ramp with the propeller blade being flat like this. So this is, the, this is for the free turbo prop when it's parked. This is for the fixed turbo prop when it's parked. So when you, when you come across an aircraft that is parked, turbo engine, and the blades are like this, completely flat. Then you know you're looking at a fixed turbine engine because when you start this up, remember there's only one shaft, so the starter has to turn the whole thing with the gearbox and the propeller, and so the propeller starts spinning the second you hit the starter, and of course, you can't have all this additional drag of the propeller blades being feathered and as the starting process starts, those, those blades moving um, like 90 degrees to their air, um, uh, yeah, to the, to the airflow and um, this additional drag would make it pretty much impossible to start the engine because you would need to spin it up to quite some RPM against the um, resistance of the feathered prop until you have enough oil pressure that the oil pressure works through the governor and flattens out the prop pitch. So that is why in the fixed turbo prop there are mechanisms in place, so called start locks, which keep the propeller blades flat even with no oil pressure um, when the engine is shut down. All right, now that you know how to um, spot the fixed versus the free turbo prop on the ramp when it's parked. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the cockpit controls for each one. You're probably most familiar with this type of control up here like you find it in the King or King Air or the Caravan. You have the power lever, you have the prop control, you have the condition lever and in the Caravan you also have the emergency power lever, the red lever for emergency power. I explained how this works in the last video. I won't explain it again so uh, for explanation of the red emergency power go back one video. In the fixed turbo prop you usually only have those two levers, the power lever and a condition lever which kind of combines the uh, prop and the condition lever into one lever. Uh, so let's talk briefly about the operation of the free turbo prop engine. Well it is um, very easy. The power lever has a forward range and a beta range. In the forward range you just add power to the gas generator that gives more power to the propeller section. The propeller provides more torque, um, thus more thrust, shoving more air back, um, delivering more thrust. And the higher you put the um, power output for the gas generator, the more power you put onto the propeller. And the propeller governor, of course, will prevent the propeller from spinning too fast. If you put too much power on the propeller and you hit the set RPM, um, every more power will go towards steepening the prop pitch and the prop will keep the set RPM no matter how much power you throw at it. And the set RPM for the prop governor, of course, you control with the prop control lever. Um, at the end here, um, where well it says flight idle, um, this is where we um, are back at idle power for flight and if we are on the ground we can lift the power lever over a gate into the ground range, also called beta range. What happens there is we are no longer letting the prop rest on the governor's stop but instead we take the prop pitch back even from the governor's stop 
into a more and more flat blade angle and eventually we cross across ground idle into the reverse range where we go even more negative than flat and in that case generating reverse thrust because instead of shoving the air backwards we're now shoving the air forwards and towards the end of the reverse range we are adding power again so the way the power that we're putting into the gas generator with the power lever looks like this. It increases forward in the alpha range. And if we are on the ground here and cross into the beta range, the power stays flat while the blade angle goes towards flat and then eventually into reverse. And as we come into even more reverse, the power goes back up. So this is the power curve that we set with the power lever and the condition lever has one very, very simple um, uh, uh, purpose and that is to set where the idle power flats out. So where this part of the curve, the flat part of the curve is, whether it is way down at low idle, if the condition lever is about here, or whether we raise the bottom of that towards high idle. So what we do with the condition lever is we control where the bottom of this power curve is, whether it's here at the black low idle position or here at the blue high idle position. Um, so as you can see, the condition lever has no influence once we are up here and forward or up here in reverse. The only thing the condition lever controls is where the power bottoms out. So this is the operation of the free turboprop. In the fixed turboprop, the power lever works kind of the same. It also has a forward range where we add power, an idle position where we are at idle power, and then we cross it over a, a gate into the ground range and in the ground range we move the propeller pitch again from governor flat towards completely flat and then eventually towards reverse. And the condition lever in the fixed turboprop engine combines the prop lever, the prop governor in the top range of the condition lever. So up here between takeoff and cruise mode, the condition lever acts as the prop lever. So changing between takeoff and cruise is the same as on the free turbo prop moving the blue um, uh, prop lever between um, those set RPMs. And once we are on the ground and we are beyond the flight idle position towards the ground idle position, then we can pull the condition lever back into the ground range and what it does here, now the condition lever acts as the set point for the idle, for the fuel control, and then it assumes the role of this. So what the condition lever in the fixed turbo prop does, it combines the prop lever in the topmost range and the condition lever, the idle set point in the bottom range of the condition lever. So really just those two levers mesh together into one. And of course, both the prop lever in the free turbine engine and the condition lever in the fixed turbine engine have a feather range in the free turbine engine. All it does, it, it dumps the oil from the prop governor and the prop goes into feather and if we want to shut down the engine we have to additionally pull the condition lever all the way back again in the fixed turbo prop everything is combined into one lever if we pull that all the way back it both cuts off the fuel flow and dumps the oil from the prop governor that's why it's feather and cut off so really just those two combined into one lever that's all there is to it all right, this concludes my discussion of the two turboprop engine types and um, I am very happy to <laughs> I am very happy to announce that we have a big update to the default King Air coming up. The default King Air 
obviously featuring the free turbine engine, the PT6 turboprop type. And uh, X Plane 1135 um, will go into beta at some point in the near future and will feature a greatly improved default C90B King Air. And in order for you to be ready to fly it, I wanted to talk to you about the turboprop engines. And I have done so, and that completes my three part video series on turboprop engines. See you next time when I show you the revised King Air.